In this lecture, I'm going to describe another recursively defined combinatorial class, uh, which is counted by the super Catalan numbers or what are also known as the Schroeder numbers. So the basic question is, in how many ways can you bracket a string of n identical symbols? This probably needs some explanation, so let me explain explain but first with an example so here I have the symbol X and I have written it five times and what I can do is I can start bracketing these symbols so the brackets they must be matched and so here's an example of a bracketing to give a precise definition it's uh, probably best to give it recursively Firstly, we say that a single string, uh, a single letter string, X itself is uh, a bracketing. And then we can build up a bracketing by bracketing together uh, a bunch of other bracketings. So if sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma k are bracketings, for k uh, greater than or equal to 2, then we can bracket these together is a bracketing. So this example uh, is obtained by, firstly we have x is a bracketing. by the first, uh, first the base case of the recursive definition and then if we take sigma 1 equals x, sigma 2 equals x, then this means that x x this is a bracketing. And now I take uh, x is a bracketing, I call that sigma 1 x x is a bracketing i call that sigma 2 x x is another bracketing i call that sigma 3 and with this i get that x x x this what i had written above is a bracketing um, these uh, structures are also related to trees so um, you can describe bracketings in terms of uh, plane trees which we've seen before but um, it's not quite exactly the same combinatorial class in that the weight function is different so x this corresponds to only a tree with a single root just one node which is a root and if you have sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma k, these are bracketings, then this corresponds to the tree with a root from which I will put down k children and they will be according to sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma k. In our example, we had uh, this x five symbol thing. So at the top level, we have a root and then it must have three children because three expressions were bracketed at the top level. And so it will have uh, three children. I'll, I'll uh, make this into a tree, right? We don't write X like this. Now what this means is that here I will replace this node by the tree corresponding to X. But the tree corresponding to X, according to this rule here, is just a tree with one node. And the tree corresponding to xx, well, it's according to our rule, it would be one node with two children. Uh, 
and the same here. And you can think of the individual X's as being the leaves of this plane tree. And you can go back from this plane tree uh, to the bracketing by just, uh, you know, so first you bracket these two X's together, then you bracket these two X's together. And then you, at each level of the tree, you just put together the symbols that you have starting with the leaves. Okay, so let me now, um, uh, so, so in particular, let me just say one thing, you get uh, rooted plane trees where each internal node has at least two children. You don't allow an internal node to have only one child. because at each stage you are bracketing at least two expressions together. And uh, so now we can define the combinatorial class the class of all bracketings. And the size of alpha is the length of the underlying string. So this size function is a bit different from uh, when we just had the class of plane trees. And uh, in the uh, plane tree model, this alpha is actually uh, number of leaves. So the internal nodes do not count uh, towards the size. Let's just look at uh, some examples. So let's just look at, uh, so let's call this class something. Let's call it S, the class of all bracketings. Okay, so now let's just look at uh, for small values of n, what is the number of n? What are the elements in Sn? So if n is 1, then you're just looking at uh, there's only one uh, bracketing of one symbol and that's just x. If n is 2, then there are, uh, well, again, there's just one bracketing because you just have to put the two x's together and then bracket them. Uh, if x is 3, then you can have, either you can have uh, uh, three symbols of size one bracket together, which is this, or you can have one symbol of size one and one symbol of size two bracketed together. But this can be done in two possible ways, which are these two. And so we have uh, three bracketings of uh, a string of three identical x's. For four, suddenly the number grows quite a bit. So of course you have We'll start with the case where you just take four symbols of size one and bracket them. Now let's look at the case where we take one symbol of size three and one symbol of size one and bracket them. So you can either do X uh, bracketed with three X's or you can do three X's and then X. Okay, and then we can do uh, uh, two symbols of size two each. But then there's only one way to do that, which is uh, xx bracketed with itself. And now let's look at the case where we can do, uh, um, let's look at the case where we can do, uh, oh yeah, but there's, there's also, we, we have uh, more symbols of size three. So over here, I can also take x and then I can take one of these two. So I can take x, 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 and I can take uh, on the other side, x, 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 x. And then I can do the same with this.
and here I have x okay so these six here take care of the ones where I have uh, two things at the top level one of size one and one of size three and here I take care of where I have two things at the top level both of size two and that leaves us with the case where we have one of size two and two of size one and uh, so we could do for some something like this size two and size one there's only one so the only question is where do they appear so so this is one this is another and finally this is the third so let's see how many have we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and that's it it turns out that that's all there are so here we have uh, one one three and eleven now just from the definition we can try to easily write down uh, a functional equation that is satisfied by this um, combinatorial class which is that s is equal to x which is just uh, a single node rooted tree that node itself is a leaf so it has weight one and then we would have um, a sequence of length at least two in s So this means that the generating function is given by s of x is equal to x plus s of x squared divided by 1 minus sx. This is sequences of length at least 2. Um, and so I can write this as um, s of x minus, just multiplying by 1 minus sx, s of x squared is equal to x minus x s x plus s of x squared um, which now I can write as a standard form of a quadratic equation 2 s of x squared minus 1 plus x times s x plus x is equal to 0 and solving this quadratic equation you get s of x equals uh, minus b so that's 1 plus x plus or minus we'll figure out which one in a minute and then well let me write it as b squared minus 4ac so 1 plus x whole squared minus 8 um, x and this whole thing raised to the power half and then divided by um, 4 now to figure out which power which sign we must have here let's just note that uh, we want um, the um, we want the degree zero term to be zero because uh, if there are no symbols then there are no bracketings that's the way we've defined the class here and so what we have is just um, a minus here we can remove the plus and this simplifies to 1 plus x minus 1 minus 6x plus x squared to the power half all divided by 4. And you can use this uh, to compute uh, the number of um, such bracketings for each n but it might be easier to try to use uh, this recurrence relation over here uh, that is this, this quadratic equation itself. Uh, by matching the coefficients of each power of x with 0 and express each coefficient in terms of the lower coefficients.